G'day folks and uh, welcome back to my home workshop. Today I'd like to share with you my vacuum fixture that I made for my customer, uh, Mark from Phase Change Converters Australia. Now I actually did a video on this uh, previously and if you check the upload of my videos you'll see that. However, the, the setup I did uh, th that I had was very uneconomical. Uh, you may recall I was using clamps to clamp the side of the plate, I was using uh, spring-loaded clamps to clamp the front of the plate, and I could only run two parts at a time. And as a CNC operator, that becomes very uh, ineffective and impractical. So it was back to the drawing board, and I came up with this vacuum fixture. Now, vacuum is nothing new. However, for me in a VMC, I've never used it before. I have used vacuum fixtures in CNC routing, but not in a vertical machining center. So what are these parts? So these are extruded aluminum plates, okay, that need a series of holes drilled uh, in precise locations and tapped. Now, what these plates do, they come out of a rotary phase change converter, uh, which are made here in Australia, and they hold the electronic circuit board and some other big uh, resistors or thyristors, thyristors or capacitors. I'm sorry, I'm not an electronics guy, but running in a vacuum fixture here, this has really helped to speed up my process. So uh, roughly I'm getting uh, cycle time now between door open to door close is about eight minutes and I'm pulling off a completed pair. Now there's two different sizes and the smaller size is easy. It just has a... Uh, drilled holes, uh, in this case I bore the holes and then or circular interpolate them and tap them. The bigger plate has to have, it has to be flipped on its end and have the two, um, the side of it drilled and tapped. Now looking at this vacuum fixture that I've got here today, I've got a pump, I've got a old LPG gas tank that I've turned into a reservoir chamber and I've got the uh, aluminium plates of course standoffs and this big right angle fixture. Now, roughly, this owes me anywhere between $550 to $600 for the full setup. Now, that's Australian dollars. If you were to convert that to US dollars, it's probably about $400 to $450 US dollars, okay? But don't quote me on that. Um, it, it looks a little bit ugly. It's got more valves than a Russian submarine. Um, <laughs> anyway, but, but it works. It's functioning. So what I can do now, I can turn on the main line. I can vac down the smaller plates straight away, turn on the second uh, valve, that will vac down the bigger plate. And to hold the right angle plate now, I just use a quick, uh, quick action bar clamp uh, that I've cut down and adapted and just simply one turn and that locks it up. Cycle start and I'm away. Now this has really sped up my operation, you've got no idea. Um, when I was first started doing these, I think it took me like a whole weekend to punch out the set. Uh, and so yesterday I made 50 pairs, okay, in a, in a standard day. When I first started investigating these things, sure, you, you can buy vacuum plates, uh, you know, straight off the market. You can buy them online from Alibaba or whatever. You can buy the Pearson vacuum plates. But seriously, for my um, purpose here, I couldn't use those. This is why I had to build a custom plate. Now, when thinking about vacuum, I first turned to a vacuum generator. And this is made by Festo. And it was about $70 or something like that, Australian, $78, $80, all right? Um, I decided not to go with this, okay? And I went to Amazon and I bought a single stage vacuum pump. Now, this was about $119 Australian. I couldn't believe it. I ordered it... Um, you know, on, at night, and it was here the next day, and I thought, bloody fantastic. So just quickly, guys, I run this vacuum pump here through a valve, one-way valve. It goes into the tank. Now, this is an old LPG gas bottle, which I stole from my son-in-law. So, Mitchell, you're not getting it back, mate. Suck eggs. What I did here was I had to remove the valve. Now, if you've ever tried to get an LP, LP gas bottle valve out, I tell you what, uh, it'd be easy to find gold and leprechaun because they're in there bloody tight. They must glue them in. I had to cut off the top. Um, and even then I, I had it blocked on wood. I had a pair of stiltsons on it. The big fella stood on the stiltson and it would not undo. I had to stick the valve upside down in the vise and get two tire levers, big tire levers on the arse of the bottle to undo it and crack it. 
Now, once doing that, I bought a, a blanking plug to stick in the bottle. I drilled and tapped a hole, a BSP hole. I think it's one eighth BSP. Put the vacuum gauge in. This is not the best here, what I've done here. I drilled and tapped directly into the bottle. And unfortunately, uh, it's very thin. It's only about 2.5 mil thick. And I had to put some fiber washers in there to try and get it to seal. However, it worked. So what does it do? Two function, it acts as a vacuum chamber. So it's a, it's a, a reservoir. So I've got heaps of vacuum on tap when I need it. Second of all, any coolant that should slip under the O-ring uh, will end up in here and not in the pump. And that happened during the 50, I think I machined 56 pairs on Sunday, okay? And I got a little bit of coolant, probably a half a cup full in here, but none in the pump, which was really good. Now, the pump here is pretty fast. It will suck down, I think it's rated at three CFM or something like that, and it will suck down to minus 0.08 of a bar within 50 seconds. Compared to this thing here, uh, which takes um, 65 seconds to suck down. Now, to get to full vacuum at negative 0.85, negative 0.9 to thereabouts, uh, this little pump does it much more efficiently and does it in about 70 seconds, okay? It uses bugger all electricity. Um, I think it used 0.3 kilowatts per cycle. Now, it's, like I said, it was an eight minute machine time. So at the six minute part, uh, sorry, at the six minute mark, I would turn the pump off to, to allow it uh, to cool down a little bit. These, uh, unfortunately, they don't rate the duty cycle of the pump. However, um, it was starting to get warm to touch. So I just turned it off at the six minute mark, uh, you know, wait for the machine to finish, open the door, blow it off, turn my valves out, rejig re it, uh, and then press cycle start and then just turn the pump back on. So it was getting between six minutes run, it was getting two minutes rest, okay? Now, if you work that out for all the parts I machine, to run that is roughly about, uh, in Australia, well, in Victoria where I live, okay, Melbourne, Victoria, they charge us 27 cents, roughly 28 cents uh, per kilowatt hour. So to run this pump for the day was about $4.20. Um, it would have cost me more to run this because running this on my big air compressor, which you can uh, look in my previous videos if you want to have a look at that, um, it was cycling every one, one minute 50 seconds, that air compressor would start up and that air compressor only draws anywhere between two kilowatts, okay, when three motors are running. All right, so it's much cheaper to run. I'll give you a little look at it and you can just see how loud it is, okay? And, uh, you probably won't, I can't zoom in on the camera. I don't have a camera operator, unfortunately, but I'll turn this on so you can see it. And if I don't talk, we're at about 42 decibels in my workshop. So let's turn the pump on. So it's 70 dBA at the pump, and approximately a meter away, it's about 60 dBA. Now, for a comparison, let's turn on the vacuum generator and just have a listen to it. Now at the source, it's 90 dBA, and roughly a meter away, it's 80 dBA. Okay, so you can see this thing is very, very loud to operate. Now, to run these parts today, I used uh, Fusion 360 CAD CAM. And what I did, I actually modeled everything uh, for this setup. So I've got my, my table, uh, the base plate, the standoffs, uh, the two fixture plates and the right angle plate. I didn't model the valves, okay? I've I could have taken it a step further and used a product like Inventor or something to work out flow rate and all that sort of stuff. However, I'm not that smart to do that. <laughs> so for me, it was the good old trial and error method. So let's take a look at the cam just quickly here. I'll flick over to, to the screen and I'll just show you what's going on here. You'll notice that I set up three work offsets. So this first plate is work offset G54. So in your cam setup, you'll call that zero or one. For the second plate, is work offset G55. So in your setup tab, that will be work offset number two. The right angle plate was set to 
work offset G56, um, which is number three in your cam setup. Okay, and you can see that I've picked up the center position for each one of those plates. Now, what surprised me was the actual simulation time was very, very close to the machine runtime, and I was quite taken back by how close it actually was. So the simulation says it's about six minutes 19, six minutes 20, and when I check on my controller, when I was running the cycles, it was roughly six minutes 30 on the money, okay? And give or take a minute or a minute and a half, depending on how fast I decided to work on the day, um, would it allow me to open the door, get the parts out and put the new ones in. So let's flick over to the machine now and watch this running. Um, it's nothing flash guys, it's basic 2D milling. However, the position of the holes are paramount and the accuracy, high accuracy, was also paramount. So instead of drilling these holes, I circular interpolated them. And then I followed up with a, a tap and just did some rigid tapping. Now you may be wondering what tools I was using for this video. So I was using Evolute End Mills, okay, from Arthur up at Live Tools. And the taps I was using for this uh, are made in Italy, and I believe it's a UFS tap, okay, and um, they're also supplied by Arti at Live Tools. The good thing about the Evolute end mills are that they're solid carbide and they're made right here in Melbourne, Australia. So anyway, that just about does it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, following in on my journey um, with vacuum fixturing. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put them below. Uh, thank you very much and I'll see you on the next video. Okay, bye bye. No doubt my neighbours weren't too happy about the noise I was making on a Sunday, but anyway, shit happens, all right? But it was really, really good. It sped things up, and uh, I'm happier than a fat kid in a KFC store. That was a poor joke. I only keep the bag because my wife will only make when I wear it over my head. It's okay, buddy. I was going to stick that up your ass. <laughs> Poor little mate.